Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions. I have a whole bunch of new stuff here to try out and I'm really, really excited to. Some of the things are new to me and some of them are new to the market as well. Like some of them I just received like five minutes ago. I just got the e.l.f. putty bronzers as well as the new Acne Fighting Putty Primer. Really excited to put those to use. I got the new Pat McGrath collection with the blushes and the new eyeshadow palette and lips. I have the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, the oil free one, which is the new one, and just a bunch of other stuff. Oh, and this from Rouge Beauty. I've never tried anything from the brand and it looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm excited to dive into all of this. That was just a few of the things I have here to try out. So it's going to be a good one. So I'll keep this intro pretty short. And before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me and let's get to it. So the first product I'm going to be trying out today is the Acne Fighting Putty Primer from e.l.f. I've actually never tried the original one either, but I'm excited to try this one today because my skin has been rough the last couple days. This period is really doing something to my skin this time and my skin is so painful and it's breaking out like crazy. So I think this is a perfect product to go in with today. And it's matcha green. So immediately love. They also sent over this brush, with this little scoop at the end. I don't know how much to take of this, but I'll start off with a little amount around that much just a little scrape i think i'm going to apply it with my fingertips just so i can really melt it in the center of my face and on the areas that are quite a bit more textured so i'm gonna rub it and melt it in between my fingertips and go from the center out i'm really excited to try out these putty bronzers the shade range is really nice they sent like three shades i believe they came out with eight i received a really really deep one like i've never seen a bronzer go that deep with my own eyes. So excited about that. This feels really nice. I thought it was going to feel more silicone-y, but it just feels like a, a nice, uh, more like balmy moisturizer. And that tiny bit really spread everywhere. So that's great. I feel like that's all I can report now. Let's see how a foundation or tinted moisturizer rather layers on top of that. I will be using the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer, the oil free version. So this is the newer one. The older one is still available, but this one just doesn't have any oil in it. I'm just going to quickly shade match myself and then I'll apply it. That was such a confusing experience because I kind of mixed up the bottles as I was watching them on my skin. And every time I would put a new dollop on my skin, it looked completely different from the old swatch. It looks like this one is a intense oxidizer. So I have no idea how this is going to go. So I think I'm going to use nude 2N1. It goes okay. I was going to use the deepest shade that I had, but it looked like it oxidized a ton on the back of my hand. Same on the area where I did swatch it. So we'll see how this goes. Using my Moda complexion brush. This one does look a little bit light, but hopefully it does dry down to something a little closer to my skin tone. Yeah, you can see it adjusting right away. So that's something to keep in mind. Maybe go one shade lighter than you would expect because it does oxidize. From what I'm feeling right now, it feels like a little bit more sticky to apply like it's not as creamy going onto the skin so it doesn't spread as easily which is not entirely a bad thing it just feels different from other tinted moisturizers i've been using lately but it's not having issues spreading out at all it's just a little observation it definitely feels water-based which i think i believe it is since it's oil free i'm just going to build up a second layer on these areas I don't know why I'm breaking out so bad this time around and it's like a complete different kind of breakout than what I usually get. They're like super deep volcanoes and they're so painful like every time I talk I can like feel them under my skin just being little devils. It's awful. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> and it's not helping that I keep trying to pick at them to relieve that pressure. <laughs> It's just not good. So I'm happy to put on some makeup today just so I stop myself from picking my skin. Yikes. It's been a couple days, y'all. It's been a couple days. I'm happy I went with this shade because I feel like it's set down to a perfect color for my skin tone right now. But that looks really nice. I don't see it even on my skin. It's probably one of the most skin-like skin tints I have tried. I haven't even gone over everything with my beauty blender yet. 
that's wild it's so so skin like like it just looks like i have an actual moisturizer on i'll bring you guys in look at that look i even have a zit on my eyelid what the hell and that primer definitely helped me today with smoothening out my skin I like the way this is looking. I look nice and moisturized. I do wish that I had a bit more coverage for how I'm feeling today, but this looks really, really beautiful. Now for my concealer, I'm going to be going in with the Bobbi Brown Intensive Skin Serum Concealer. I thought they only had the foundation, but I was so excited to see that they had um, this in a concealer form. So I'll be using the shade Beige. Oh, it feels very, very thin. And I'm just gonna blend that out with my sponge. That's definitely my preferred way to apply concealer. I feel like it always achieves the most flawless finish. Oh yeah, that's very, very similar to the foundation. Has the same finish, which I was expecting, but that looks really nice under the eyes. It packs a lot more coverage than you'd expect for this thin of a texture. Ooh, okay, I feel excited about this from what it's looking like immediately on. Ooh, wow, that's really nice. It honestly reminds me of like a thinner version of the Kosas Revealer Concealer. It has the same kind of finish, but in a thinner formula. I just took some on the back of my hand here just because I didn't wanna get um, bacteria in my applicator, and I'm just gonna apply it to the areas where I want more coverage today. And I'm just grabbing my foundation brush once again, and I'm just gonna stipple it on right here just to really concentrate that coverage where I'm needing it or wanting it rather. And then I'll go over my sponge to remove any stipple marks. Yeah, that layered on top of that nicely from what I'm seeing. Nice. Okay, I do really like how the base is looking. It feels super lightweight. Like I don't feel like I'm wearing any makeup whatsoever right now, which is incredible. I think the finish of everything looks stunning. I look nice and smooth. I like the amount of coverage I'm seeing from that skin tint. I think I would definitely use that. I wasn't sure how I was going to get along with it, honestly, but I, I'm liking what I'm seeing. <laughs> and by the way, yes, I am working on like a skin tint video. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I've been taking notes on all the skin tints I've been using and I've been really comparing them to one another. So I'm gonna try this a few more times. I want to include it in that video. So that should be ready in a couple weeks, I, I presume. But now for powder. I'm going to be trying out this one. This is a newer one from Armani Beauty. It's the Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. It sounds lovely and it looks really interesting because it has a super velvety texture. I haven't swatched this one so you can still see what it looks like. See, look how velvety that looks. It looks so fun. Ooh, it's so soft. You can see it does have a nice subtle glow within it. Feels really good. I have a couple shades here, so I'm not sure which one would work the best. I will say that the packaging is a little bit bulky for me. I would have rather them not include this section for this little brush, but I mean, it's good for touch-ups, but just me being picky, I guess. Ooh. Unsatisfying, okay. So I'm going to use this BH Cosmetics number no. three brush, which is just an angled um, brush. This is the only one I have that doesn't have any other powders on it. So I'm just gonna dip right in here and we'll see how this goes. I'll start off on my forehead. Mm, I don't know. It does have like a pearl in there and I feel like it just made me look even glowier. I feel like I need to try out a different color. This one is a little ashy from what I'm seeing on my forehead. I'm gonna try number three instead. I can see the pearls visibly. It's a little chunkier than what I would like in a face powder. So let's try number three before getting into any conclusions here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it definitely blurs a bit. Mm, does it though? Hard to tell right now. I'll just apply it and then I'll look real close. And then I'm going to take a little floof brush. Put some under my eyes. Yeah, like this is giving me like a powder version of the Huda Beauty Glowish Tinted Moisturizer. It has quite a silvery pearlescence in here. So it's giving me a little Tin Man vibe. Not like completely, but like it's glowing in a way I would rather not. <laughs> I don't know. I think I prefer all the other powders I use all the time. Like the Cloud Set, Charlotte Tilbury one, Pat McGrath Loose Powder, and the Under Eye Powder. Like this isn't doing much for my under eyes. It's kind of accentuating my fine lines I have under there. She's pearly, very pearly, not a fan. Not a fan. It looks a little cakey 
on the areas where I move my face a lot, like on my forehead, it's stuff that like really increases texture and looks cakey. That's a no from me, sadly. So now it's time to move on to bronzers and I'm super excited to try this out. This is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzers. I have three shades here and I think they sent three shades to kind of familiarize myself with the shade range. I do wish they sent like the three lightest tones just for my collection, but it's fun to see some of the deeper tones as well. This one right here is Beach Please and this is the second to deepest shade that they offer. And look at that. I feel like the industry has to improve on bronzer shade ranges as well as tinted moisturizer ranges. I feel like those are the two areas that brands kind of cheap out on the most or they like make up a lot more excuses for those areas. I mean, the industry I think is getting better and better as time goes on, but I feel like especially in those two categories we need to improve. This one right here is Bronze Bell. I believe that one's right in the middle. And the lightest one I have in front of me is Tan Lines. This is the one I'll be using today. Looks nice to me. I'm going to be using my Melt Cosmetics 777 brush to apply. I'm just gonna dip right in there. I was so happy that these arrived to me today because they weren't available anywhere online yet when I looked like a couple days ago. So I'm really, really happy they arrived. Ooh, this is a nice color. It's very, very subtle. This is so easy to apply. I'm shocked right now. This is such a nice color. It looks exactly like a color that I would naturally turn to and it's so easy to apply and it's very blurring as well. It's honestly blending a lot easier than a lot of the other higher end bronzers I use. Like it's kind of giving me a sheer, sheer version of the Huda Beauty Tantour. That was one of the more pleasant bronzing experiences. It's such a nice formula, super easy to use and once it's dry, it sets down to almost this powdery state. Not super powdery, but like, it sets down. I did swatch the three shades that I have here. Bottom one, tan lines, that's the one I'm wearing. The middle one is bronzed bell, and the deepest shade there is beach please. Really nice formula, so you can see on the swatches here how sheer they actually are, but very impactful as well. And for $6, like this is insane. I'm so, so, so happy with this. <laughs> for my highlighter, I'm finally going to be testing this one out. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. I have the shade Precious Petals here. I'm going to be using my handy dandy brush here, the Moda Glow Brush. This one looks like it can be a bit more on the intense side just by looking at it. So I'm just gonna take a little amount to start. Oh, maybe I was wrong. Go in with a little bit more. <laughs> oh wow, okay, that's a lot more subdued than I was expecting this one to be. Wow, I'm really happy with this. It just looks nice. There might be a few little chunky glitters in here. No, there isn't. This is blending out really, really nicely. It's a little texture enhancing, but nothing crazy. It really sunk into the base nicely. Like it looks like one. That looks nice. I was expecting this color to be a lot more on the pink side, but this is like a more champagne-y bronzy color. And I do enjoy the way that's looking. I don't know if it's like my all-time favorite powder highlight, but for a powder highlight, I really, really like this. I don't have any powder highlighters in my collection from the drugstore and I've been looking for one and this is one that I see myself keeping in there. I've never come across one that I enjoyed except this one it feels promising. I'm just gonna go over everything with my sponge just, just to see if that makes it look a bit more cream-like. Oh, I'm also gonna throw some of that into my inner corner. I really like the looks of that. It looks really nice on camera as well. I do actually like that. It's growing on me as the seconds go by. Let's see how that rests into my skin here. But now let's move on to blush and then we'll reconvene. So now I'm going to go on the bougie side of things and I'm going to try out one of the Pat McGrath blushes. These are called the Divine Blushes. I have four shades. I believe there's more than four. I just wanted to show you the packaging on these. They're so pretty. I love the lavender and you open it up like that. So 
gorgeous and I love that it's still in cardboard packaging but it just feels so fancy like I want to keep this these colors look lovely here I'll open them all up and then I'll show them oh there's a highlighter in here <laughs> surprise I'm gonna have to save that for another day <laughs> I'm gonna put that to the side so I only have three blushes so this one right here is the shade divine rose look at that imprint in there gorgeous divine rose this one, which I think I'm going to be going in with today, is Paradise Venus. Beautiful, sunburny kind of shade. And this one here is called Nymphette. They look nice. If I know anything, I bet these are going to be very pigmented. So I'm gonna apply it with this more fluffy brush. This is a Coach brush, the angled one. That doesn't have a number. I'm just gonna lightly tap into here. This looks like a very pigmented shade too. Tap off the excess and here we go. It's kind of sticking down to where I applied it. Hopefully I can blend that out. I haven't been keeping up with Pat McGrath's releases for a while now, but I was excited by this one, but I don't know if I'm really liking how this is applying. It's really sticking down to anywhere. And this is an area where I did apply powder earlier and it's just, not applying smoothly. It's almost like it's a magnet to anywhere that's a bit more tacky, which is not great. I don't really experience this kind of patchiness with any other blushes, like this hasn't been an issue for a while. Now that I've been blending for a while, it's kind of lifting up my skin tint here. It's just not what I was expecting. Making my makeup look patchy now. <laughs> Uh-oh. I really like the color of it, but uneven, very uneven. I'm gonna have to try that out again, maybe with like a different powder underneath, different brush, different combination, but let down. I feel let down. This makeup is taking a turn. It started off so good, but there's a few things that I'm kind of disappointed in. And like my under eyes are creasing so bad. Like, do you see that? Why am I, I don't know why I'm grabbing my nose like this, but you can really see the powder and concealer gathering in there. I don't know if it's the concealer that's the culprit or the powder, maybe both. I don't know, there's just a few things that look rough around the edges today. But anyways, now I'm just going to quickly prime my eyes. I'm going to be using the NARS see-through primer and I'm also going to do my brows and I'm going to use the Kosas products I've been trying out. So while I'm off doing that, please enjoy the intermission. Okay, the brows are on, the eyes are primed. Honestly, you guys, I'm really loving these brow products. I've been using them for the last couple days and every time I'm so happy with my brows. I just think they look amazing. Um, and they also last a really long time. Like this brow gel is pretty superb, if you ask me. So now for my eyes, I have some eye sticks here from Bobbi Brown. These are the Longwear Cream Shadow Sticks. I have two shades, taupe, and bark. This one is taupe and here is bark. I'm thinking of putting taupe all over my eye and then maybe creating like a little eyeliner with this one just so I can see all the ways I can use these sticks. These feel really, really nice and creamy. From what I'm seeing on the back of my hand, they diffuse quite nicely, so I have a lot of hope in these. I'll bring you guys in. Starting off with the shade taupe and I'm going to apply this all over my mobile lid first. This is kind of the way I like to play things out with cream shadows. I'm going to take this fluffy brush. This is a Smith 230 brush. And I'm going to diffuse the edges. Ooh, it's super creamy. This is really nice. Today's video theme, some things are phenomenal and the others are bad. The opposite of phenomenal, which is, I don't know. <laughs> That's super creamy. This color also reminds me of the shade from the Melt stack that I have not been able to stop using. From this stack, you guys are all probably tired of seeing me use the light brown. Let's see how it compares. Yeah, not, no, not very similar. <laughs> this is the eyeshadow and here's the Bobbi Brown stick. <laughs> I don't know, got a similar vibe. This one's definitely a lot warmer, but anyways, very easy to diffuse that. I'm going to add a second layer because it kind of got sheared out and I wanted to see how this goes, if it gets creepy or weird at all. And the answer is no. These are really easy for eyeshadow sticks. Now let's see how it works to build something a bit more structured. This is a teeny tiny Smith 
103 brush. It's a really cute angled brush. I'm now taking the shade Bark and I'm going to take off a little bit. I'm probably so cross-eyed right now. <laughs> Just These are so creamy and very easy to glide. Pretty successful, it shears out a little bit, which I don't mind because it's so nice to blend them out. I don't mind building up a little bit of a second layer. And you get a lot of play time. I kind of messed up that crisp line a bit. I'm gonna blame it on the excessive amount of caffeine I had today. So I'm taking a bit of my concealer with this sharper brush. This is specifically A1 brush from Anastasia. And I'm just gonna clean that up. And I'm just gonna run this right underneath there. And it should deal with the problem very easily. Guys, look at my under eyes. Like what? They look so scaly. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I kind of messed up the angle of my eyeliner, so it's gonna be a lot thicker. Than I was intending, but that's okay. A few things aren't going the way as planned today, but it's okay, I'll roll with the punches. <laughs> this is now a Royal and Lane Nickel Tight Liner Brush. I'm just using this to get a detailed, fine line in the inner corner. Honestly, these are probably the easiest shadow pencils to work with. For this eyeliner, it's a bit sheerer than what I would usually like, but I mean, it's not bad. It kind of gives a softer vibe, which I'm not mad at. It's just not exactly what I was expecting, but I dig it, I dig it. And I'm just gonna take a touch of this darker one, sloppily apply that, and we'll see how it blends. Taking this tiny Smith brush, it's a 233. And then for the rest, I'm gonna take that lighter taupe one. See if this helps with my under eye situation, because I do not like the looks of down there right now. It looks like greasy and scaly, just all the things you don't want your under eyes to look. The only concern I have with these eyeshadow sticks is that they feel a little bit tacky on the lid all over, so I wonder if this is gonna crease on me during the day. I guess that's something I'm gonna have to keep an eye out on. Other than that, very easy to use and diffuse and blend out and work with. Very nice to create a structured eyeliner too very smooth and glidey and a lot softer looking than other products. So I quite enjoyed that experience. So we'll see how that lasts on me. I'm just gonna quickly catch this eye up to speed real quick and I'll be right back. Here is the eyeshadow all done. And now that I have both eyes on, these are very, very sticky on my eyelids. Like I'm tempted to just layer a little bit of powder on top. So I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that. Like I'm very, very aware that I have something on my eyes and it's a little bit distracting and bothering me. But now for my mascara, I'm going to try out my first product from Rouge Beauty. Really, really excited to try out this stuff. I'll actually zoom you guys out so I can show you a few things that came in this really cute bag. So firstly, the product I'm gonna be going in with is this beautiful mascara, and I love the packaging on everything. It's very reminiscent of the Gucci Beauty products. It just has that same texture to it. The Gucci Beauty one is just a lot more fine. Still gorgeous. But here is the bag they sent over. Look how cute this is. They sent over this really cute scrunchie. This very beautiful pair of panties. <laughs> Has this really cute rose on it. I'm honestly thinking about picking up the bra top that goes with it. They're really, really cute. This is a lip palette, which I think I'm going to be using later on. It looks really nice. Beautiful shades. This is also a lipstick. I thought it was a, a nail polish, but it's actually a lip product. They have a long version of a lipstick, a classic bullet. Uh, what is this? Oh, a felt tip liner. Oh, I should have used that. I didn't know I had eye products in here, except for mascara. And in here, I, there's this really pretty heart necklace. So cute. I'm so grateful for this incredible package. It's so beautiful, very, French feeling, that's definitely their vibes. So gorgeous, very Parisian. So I'm gonna be trying out this mascara. Here we go, I'll zoom you guys back in. Here is the wand. It gives me Marc Jacobs uh, at Lashed vibes just because of the shape and the fluffiness of it. So I have high hopes, it's very small too, so I think I'll be able to coat all the lashes like I want. Oh, what's going on here? You know what's interesting? This is a drier formula. Like it feels like I've had this mascara in my collection for a while now. It's like 
it immediately arrives at its good point. Yeah, the mascara wand size is really nice to get into the inner corner. It's actually a really pretty mascara too. It's very lengthening and subtly volumizing, just like the At Lashed. Just more of a dry, thicker formula. I'm also going to throw this onto my lower lashes while I'm at it. I just want to see how it goes. Yeah, this wand is incredible. Oh no. Okay, so here is the mascara on and I'm very, very happy with the results. I think that's beautiful. I think it made my lashes look incredible. Really nice and long, a little bit thicker. I like the way that looks. I kind of got on my lid, but I don't know what to do about that. I'm going to attempt to scrape, but I feel like these just settled right into the cream shadow. I think it did. I'm stuck with that today. <laughs> Uh-oh. For my lips, I'm for sure going to be using something from Rouge once again. I just want to swatch the few things that I got. So this one's very intriguing. It's so pretty. This is the shade Marie. This is what the packaging looks like. And here is the color. Really nice. Very smooth too. And here I wanted to compare bullets. So this one right here is the Gucci Beauty one and here's Rouge. This is what, ooh, it's a nice hot pink. Ooh. Cute. It looks more coral in person. On camera, it looks a little bit closer to my nail polish, but it looks a lot more peachy coral. This is Caroline. And then there's this lip palette, which is so interesting to me. I bet you could use these on your cheeks too, but it just says lip on the back. But here is this palette. This is the palette in Signature. Interesting, they feel quite powdery. It's a very cool texture. Here are the four shades in the lip palette. Ooh, which one am I gonna use today? They all look really pretty. This one's really standing out to me or the classic red, but I feel like this one might work with the blush and things. Oh, wow. It looks just like a lip stain. Forgot to put lip liner on, but that's okay. That feels so interesting. It just feels like I'm rubbing a powder on, but it's adhering to my lips so perfectly. That's not what I was expecting at all from the application, but wow, is that ever nice. It's transfer proof too. It's just like a lip stain. Cool. I'm gonna add more into the center here for like a, a bitten look. I wonder if I have a lip liner that kind of flatters this. Let's see. I'm just gonna use a bit of Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame just to structure my lips in the center. And I'm gonna be blending most of that away because I like the diffused look. I just want my lips to have more of an obvious edge to them. Wow, okay. I really like this lip palette. It's nothing like I was expecting it to be. I thought it was just going to be creams in the palette, but this is super unique. And it feels like I'm not wearing anything at all on my lips. How interesting. I'm just shocked. It's like a lip stain and a powder thing. What, what? From afar, I think everything turned out really, really nicely. The tones play together really well. It's just a little rough around the edges when you look up close and my eyes are super sticky. <laughs> I can't get over the fact. I really like how everything turned out, to be honest. There was an interesting theme to this video. I either love the products or I really dislike them. So now I'm just going to quickly gather my thoughts and then I'll share my first impression thoughts on all the products I tried out today. So I separated all of the products I used in today's video into three categories. I'll first start off with my favorites. I think my number one favorite product from today's video was the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. This thing really blew me out of the water. I did not expect it to work as beautifully as it did. I think it's still my favorite aspect of my entire makeup look I have going on here. This was so easy to use and it just has all of the qualities I look for in a bronzer. It has that super easy to diffuse formula. It's also very sheer. Um, but it doesn't get patchy. It was just effortless and beautiful and it did set down to a more powdery state So I feel like it's going to last on my skin a lot longer than the dewier types really hopeful for this I love this and I cannot believe this is only six dollars. Like it's so worth it The shade range is beautiful really impressed with this favorite product of today's video, hands down. I did also really enjoy this primer. I'll have to try it out more, see how it works with other foundations and things, but I really like how this one has a bit of salicylic acid in there and it also really smoothened out my skin. I woke up really 
unhappy with the state of my skin today but this really helped to smoothen that situation out and made me feel a lot better about my skin today and also it's matcha green so I love it it's my favorite color <laughs> so I'm excited to continue using this one very hopeful for this another one of my favorites today was the Laura Mercier tinted moisturizer the oil free one it worked really nicely it sits really nicely the only thing that I would say to keep an eye out on is that this one tends to oxidize so definitely go with the shade lighter than you'd think and then I think it'd be perfect thankfully it doesn't oxidize to like an orange state or yellow or pink it just dries down differently but I really liked how this applied it looked very skin like overall really natural very lightweight it didn't feel heavy at all on my skin I feel very excited about this product and I am looking forward to using it a bit more this month Another favorite of mine today was the Rouge Mascara. I feel like I'll use this one a ton. It has the perfect wand for my tastes. It was really easy to apply. It got the kind of look I prefer for my lashes a little bit lengthened, pretty volumized. Just really happy with the overall result of my eyelashes. They look a lot more full than they usually are. I just think they look really feathery and beautiful and I think the packaging is just so so fun I love this texture it's just bougie and I feel excited about it another one of my favorites from today was the lip palette from Rouge this was very unexpected I just love the way my lips look they like look blurred and tinted and just really fun this was such a fun experience to use and the packaging just feels so nice and luxurious the actual product in here feels the same. I just love the way that this made my lips look like I'm wearing a stain and it just doesn't transfer. It's just such a unique product. I can't help but love it. I don't know. I'm really excited to try out the other shades in here but lovely experience. I've licked my lips a ton and it has not moved at all. I just think this is so so unique. A huge fan love this I see myself using that a ton especially when I want this kind of a pop lip but on the more natural side subdued in a way it's just unique I like it I like it a lot <laughs> another one of my favorites from today's video was the wet n wild highlighter I think it looks stunning on the areas I did apply it it caters to my tastes that's for sure I've never come across a powder highlight from the drugstore that I've liked but I feel very hopeful in this one it doesn't really remind me of any of the higher end highlighters I have in my collection. It kind of stands out to me for some reason. I really like its tone. It has like this bronzy champagne tone for my skin tone. How many times am I going to say tone? I don't know, but I just, I'm hopeful. I feel really excited about this one. I actually see myself using this one quite a bit. I only have one product in my unsure category and that is the Bobbi Brown concealer I tried today just because um, my under eyes were really not cute today and I don't know if it's because of this or because of the powder or maybe a combination of the two I'm going to have to see but the way this applied it was lovely I loved the finish of it it felt very similar to the Kosas one and I think it would be lovely paired with the foundation version of this uh, I'm definitely gonna be trying this out again I'll let you know very shortly but speaking about that powder absolutely not now we're moving into the products I was disappointed by this is a no-go for me I don't like the areas that I applied this they're so silver like I don't I don't know it's just very unnatural looking I don't like that like everywhere else where I did not apply it, it looks nice but in the center of my face I just look like a fish really really unhappy with it very like texture enhancing kind of cakey looking it almost like made my makeup look crumbly in a sense without crumbling it just like dried it out in a weird way that I don't like at all especially under the eyes that's the area that it hit the most and uh, just no no it's a big no for me guys save your money on that there's a lot more beautiful powders out there than that for the blushes the Pat McGrath ones not a fan really not a fan I was so excited about this one but it applied so horribly which is so surprising maybe it's the brush I used today I'm going to give this another go because I am in disbelief but right when I touched my brush it pretty much just stayed there and it was really hard to blend out and I had to work it and work it and work it until my foundation lifted up 
it was just not a great experience to be honest even when i swatch it it feels like it has like this stickiness to it that i'm just not a fan without over complicating things it just did not apply smoothly it was anything but easy to work with um just i'm feeling disappointed and lastly the long wear cream shadow sticks from bobby brown they're lovely they were so easy to work with but they're so sticky like they're really distracting me and I don't think I'll ever reach for them again because of how sticky they are. Gorgeous colors, easy to work with, just very sticky and uncomfortable to wear. And I can't even imagine wearing these on a hotter day outside. Like I feel like it would just get stickier and stickier. I'm just sadly not a fan. I don't think I'll be reaching for those anytime soon. But there we have it. Those are all of my first impression thoughts on all of the new products I tried out today. Keep tuned for my June roundup because all of these products will be in there for sure. I'm going to be testing these products out for the remainder of this month so I can give you guys a more in-depth review about them. But that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.